Hey, my name's Clark. And I'm Lisa. And for the next few minutes, we're going to introduce you to Guide to Advancement. Now, it's just so you know, I'm a Scoutmaster, like a real-life Scoutmaster, and I have been for many years. Um, and I'm Assistant Scoutmaster in charge of advancement for my troop. Um, I'm a parent, just like most people listening to this, who went to the wrong meeting and got volunteered to do this. <laughs> That's right. We're both volunteer scouters, and we're developing these presentations with the National Advancement Committee to help folks like us understand some of the new information in the Guide to Advancement. The National Advancement Committee is a working group of volunteers who develop the advancement policy in association with the scouting professionals. I don't know about you, Lisa. I'm pretty new to this national level of scouting. But I, I found out that the way this sort of thing works is really quite interesting. I agree. I never really thought about where these things came from before. So I'm finding it very interesting to learn some of the reasons behind how these things are done and where they come from. And it's helping me in applying it to my own unit. Yeah. I was really pleased to find that basically this kind of thing happens with a group of experienced volunteers and they study and test and develop policies and procedures. It's an amazingly talented group of people who give up a lot of their own time and resources to do things like this. You mean like this presentation we're making? Well, yeah, because we're talented and dedicated, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> um, but really, it's, it's very heartening to know that publications like the Guide to Advancement are being developed by people who have real volunteer experience, people who work with the Scouts mm -hmm. every day, um, people that are really dedicated to this program, and people from across the country, too, who have different experiences from what I have in my local council. Yeah, I was glad to know that, too. None of this happens in a vacuum. It's all done with the best interests of our scouts at heart. So are they making us say things like this? No, this is actually for real. I think it's important for people to know how things work and to know that we're really putting our heart into this, too. Right. In this case, the they is us. That's right. And before we go any further, we need to note that the Guide to Advancement replaces the publication that you used to use, the Advancement Committee Policies and Procedures book. The Guide to Advancement is the official source for administering advancement in all Boy Scouts of America programs. Statements or interpretations offered from unofficial sources may be out of date or incorrect. So when in doubt, refer to the Green Book. And by official, you know, we mean this is the definitive source to determine what advancement policies and procedures are. So unofficial websites or other writings, we, we're not supposed to use those to resolve questions of advancement? Nope. This is the one source. Okay. All in one place. So what if I read the guide and I still can't figure something out? Well, there are lots of experienced volunteer advancement administrators at both the district and the council level that you can ask questions of. That's a new one on me. What's an advancement administrator? Um, it's an, it might be a, an unfamiliar term, but it's really a unit district or council advancement chair, a district executive, or the council's professional staff advisor for advancement. Oh, okay. So advancement administrator isn't a specific position. I, it's just an easier way to say unit, district, council chairs, district advancement. Right. You know, that, yeah. All those different positions are lumped under that one category. So let's say that I go and I ask all those people and they're not able to answer my question. If you have stumped everyone there, you can still go to the national advancement team. You can send them an email and since they wrote the guide, they will have the answers, and they're always willing to help. Okay, but I should check with the local sources first. Yes, it's important that your local resources, you know, hear your questions, know what kind of issues are coming up in the field so that they can help you and so that they can learn as well. Now, one of the first things I read in the guide was the discussion about the place of advancement in scouting. Uh-huh, I saw that. So it says... Regardless of the program, whether it's Cub Scouting, Boy Scouting, Varsity Scouting, Venturing, Sea Scouts, uh, where, wherever advancement takes place, it's nothing more and nothing less than a method. It's a mean towards accomplishing the Boy Scouts of America's mission. It's not an end in itself. Right. So what do you think they mean by that? Well, I think it's just a reminder that as important as it may be, advancement isn't the entire scouting program. It would be pretty boring if it was. We wouldn't have many scouts left. I know, right? <laughs> so everything in scouting, every scouting activity, moves the boys towards three basic aims. Character development, citizenship training, and mental and physical fitness. 
if everybody who's involved in advancement remembers that, if they recognize that fact, I think we can expect success. If we don't recognize that fact, we've pretty much forgotten the purpose that we're doing all this for. Right. It's important to balance all of this within the eight methods of scouting. So the new guide has lots of uh, improvements over the last publication. It's been reorganized for easy reference. There's a list of frequently asked questions which are indexed. It has a new approach to active participation and positions of responsibility. It has a number of helpful appendices. And there's a searchable online version and PDF version available. So you can put it on your smartphone and take it with you to your troop meetings. If you must. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of must, one of the other concepts that we have to keep in mind when reading the guide is the difference between mandated procedures and recommended practices. Mandated procedures, okay. I'm guessing that those are rules and policies that must be followed. Mandated procedures are identified with terms like must and shall. Where that language is used no council, committee, district, unit, or individual has the authority to deviate from the procedures covered without written permission from the National Advancement Team. Okay, so I get that. Recommended practices must be a little different then. Yes. Recommended practices or recommended best practices use terms like should, may, or can. Okay. Now, I, I've read several sections of the guide, and so far it's pretty clear what's mandated and what's recommended. I think in most places it is. You know, if you're not positive, be sure to ask someone. I also saw this. This looked like a mandated policy to me, and it looked important enough that we should probably mention it. It says, no council committee, district unit, or individual has the authority to add to or subtract from advancement requirements. Right. And again, this is not a change from previous policies. There's mm -hmm. a few limited exceptions relating to youth members with disabilities, um, and those are detailed in Section 10, Advancement for Members with Special Needs. But otherwise, we're pretty much going to stick to exactly what the guide says, right? Yes. So you stick to, to what the guide says. You stick to the mandated procedures. And if I have questions? Then ask one of your advancement administrators. And like all Boy Scouts of America activities, the Guide to Safe Scouting applies, right? And it applies as well to um, Eagle Scout service projects. If you're using a printed version or a PDF version of this guide, you'll note that there's this indexing system. You mean all those long numbers? That's right. Each section and subsection is identified with a number. What is the deal with that? It seems a, a bit excessive to me. I got to admit, it did to me at first too, but you know what I did? What? I asked the National Advancement Team why all the numbers. You did? Yeah, and they said that the indexing numbers makes referring to things in the guide a lot easier and will allow updates to be identified and made much more easily. Oh. And it also aids in referencing one section to another section. Oh, I guess I can see that. So instead of telling people to look for a page number and then search around for a certain paragraph, you can find the information quickly. That's right, and the numbers actually come in pretty handy. See these text boxes? Uh-huh. They highlight important information or commentary, so don't skip them. Okay, I will remember to read those. Okay, so really, we've covered the basics of the Guide to Advancement. Um, we'll talk about other significant changes in the other presentations that are associated with this one. And don't forget, if you have questions that can't be answered by your local advancement administrators, you can email the National Advancement Team with your questions or comments. I think you'll find out that the Guide to Advancement is going to be a really valuable resource for you. I agree. It's nice to have everything in one place, and hopefully in listening to these presentations, people won't get too tired of hearing us talk. All right. So when you say us, you kind of mean me, right? I did not say that. Uh, I never get tired of listening to myself talk. I know that, but let's move on. All right. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Thanks, Clark.